Chapter Fifteen of Some Battle Stories by Alec John Dawson. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Chapter Fifteen: The Hospital Mail Bags. A medical officer whose duties take him to many of our military hospitals has been good enough to obtain and lend extracts from a number of letters received by wounded officers and men from comrades in other hospitals all over the world the men and women of our race and our brave allies are thinking talking and writing of the great offensive north of the somme which began on july first histories are already in the making no doubt but one doubts if any of them will contain more direct human interest than could be found just now in the mail-bags of our military hospitals dotted over the face of britain from edinburgh to torquay our wounded soldiers are enjoying an amount of leisure and rest which is of course entirely out of the reach of any one serving at the front and here in our own country a certain freedom in writing which can never exist in the neighbourhood of the enemy is permissible one finds in our hospitals and convalescent homes officers and men who were in close contact with the enemy three days ago and others again who have not seen the trenches for three weeks for three months and even here and there those who left the front as long ago as the beginning of the present year and among these patients with all their differing stages of freshness from the fighting line there are of course family ties in the military sense as well as the civilian sense the military family is the division its branches are the brigades its households are the battalions a who counts the time he has been in blighty by weeks or months gives home news in the civilian sense to b who as yet can only count his time in england by days and b fresh from his unit in france gives home news in the military sense to a thus a lieutenant in a scottish hospital who arrived home wounded a few days after the present great offensive began writing to a senior officer of his unit in a london hospital newly arrived there from the neighbourhood of highwood after thanking his senior for news of the battalion says some of the things at home will puzzle you at first having time to read the newspapers right through makes a difference i was awfully puzzled at first to find they still have tribunals and exemptions and things and people grousing about the docking of holidays and weekends and the terrible hardships of being taken away from their business for military service and so on but these things are only surface incidents really and don't mean much though they make a good deal of noise the country's perfectly sound at heart i think and i am told the munition workers really are playing up like sports one's got to remember you know that in spite of all that's happened our folk at home here have not seen war the way the people have in france it makes all the difference also the whole idea of citizen military service is strange and new to them as touching themselves they hear of married men of forty being called up for training and they seem to think it's an unheard-of kind of heroism or martyrdom or something dear souls they're so extraordinarily sentimental as you know in our battalion over sixty per cent of the men were married and all enlisted before november nineteen fourteen the proportion of over forty was very considerable although the age limit then was what was it something in the thirties i know they gave up their jobs and left their wives and families to lie about their age bless em and to train with us without being told to by any one and nobody thought to call em heroes or martyrs and i'm sure it never struck them that way though they've been living in the trenches just on a year and the new lot that get so much sympathy have been raking in the shackles at higher rates of pay than they ever had in their lives during twenty months of war and enjoying all home comforts queer isn't it and to think of men a month or two over the age being keen to take advantage of the calendar now and other chaps prating to the tribunals about their consciences and their businesses and things 
mostly businesses i think now after two years and at the height of the somme push but the country as a whole is sound and quite unalterably determined and i think we can rely on it there'll be no slackening in the munitions output and if i'm right there the boche's number is up and nothing in the wide world can save him a sergeant in the south coast writing to his platoon commander in manchester it is three days now since i landed sir and i was very glad to have your letter this morning you really must not worry about the platoon sir they would be very much upset if they knew you were worrying about them because they would think you could not trust them and you know sir they are worth trusting i left lance sergeant blank in charge he's come on wonderfully and i asked captain c if he would recommend him for full sergeant he's worth it the doctor here promises me that i can be out of hospital in a week or two so i may get back before you and in any case the platoon will do nothing to disgrace you sir you can rely on that in the push-up north of Pozieres, we had the right flank of the company and the captain said we did splendidly we had nine casualties and i'm quite sure we got three times that number of boches besides eleven prisoners we took after we'd got their front trench corporal s and three men of his section went out on their own the moon was clouded then and got a boche machine-gun from their second line and brought it back with three helmets the corporal was slightly wounded and the others not touched the c o was told about it they all want you back sir but the platoon's doing fine and you must not worry about them i think we've got the boche fairly moving this time he won't hold threepful much longer private blank in colchester to private blank in london i saw t d to-day and he told me you were in london how goes it old sport i got a bit of shrap in my shoulder but nothing to worry about we had a great do outside longy valley after you left you remember that ridge on the right past where the reaper lay we had master bosch on toast there he came on at us in great blobs like those stunts we did at codford we held our fire and then let him have it at close range four lewis guns and our own rapid hard as we could lick my rifle burned my hand you never saw anything like it the way those huns went down seemed a shame to take the money and then all of a sudden cease fire and the captain yells out adam boys finish the blighters he says and over we went it was a proper circus we thought it was to be just a defence and instead we took their bloomin trench and fairly put the wind up the lot of em you never saw the like half of em was bayoneted climbing over their own parados fairly spiked to it and the rest of em was prisoners fair screaming for mercy they was we held that trench for over an hour and bombed right along their communications and blew in their dugouts and two machine-gun emplacements and while we were doing it b company was cutting a sap out from our own front line so's we'd had cover most of the way back a great do from a subaltern in glasgow to a subaltern in london i've just heard i've got my second star so you'll have to be a bit more respectful in future my son three weeks in command of the company you know with only one star what a hero mind you they did play up well i'll never forget it there wasn't a man in the company but was trying to help me all the time and as for the old c s m bless his geordie heart i'd like to put up a statue to him for three days before he was killed i don't believe he was ever off his feet and mind you we were hard strafing most of the time he did a bit of everything the s m from bombing and machine-gunning to burying huns to get em out of our road i got a couple of helmets but i gave one to blank because it was given me the one i've kept i took on my own from the beggar who got his bayonet through my arm i'll never go without a rifle and bayonet again had to tackle the beggar with my hands 
but i finished him with my revolver and after that i carried his rifle you bet and hung his pickle tub or whatever you call em on my belt there's a lot of fight left in em of course but we've got em cold this time i'm certain of it the prisoners we take are jolly glad to get out of it people say human nature's the same everywhere well it isn't you take it from me these blooming huns are not the same stuff as our men our chaps mostly want to go straight they're all decent at heart bosch wants to go crooked and begad he does End of chapter fifteen